Have you ever wondered what it would be like to own a vacation rental property in Florida, specifically Disney versus the beach? Today, we're gonna to be talking about the real numbers of what it costs to own a vacation rental property in these areas. We're also gonna be discussing the hidden fees and costs associated with those properties. I brought in a beachfront expert who sold many of these properties. And at the end of this video, you're gonna find out which one might be the better investment for you. So stick around, you might learn something. And if it's your first time here, go ahead and subscribe to this channel for more informative videos for the Central Florida market. So I recently got a phone call from somebody in California who was thinking of buying a investment property in Central Florida. And their criteria was one of being close to the water, to the beach versus being near Disney. And I decided to make this video to show you guys at home the real cost of owning an investment like this. Many people think it's gonna to be totally magical and it's gonna bring in tons of rental income and you can block off the dates and use it for your family whenever you want. But the reality is there can be really high fees involved. There can be a lot of maintenance costs, insurance, liability. And that's what I want to share with you guys with my spreadsheets and cruising the MLS to compare two real properties and help you make a decision if you were deciding to purchase something like this in Florida. And we have a special guest today. This is someone who sells a lot of beachfront property in the Jacksonville area and all up and down the east coast of Florida. His name is Valiant. Please welcome Valiant. Hello, everyone. Hey, he's here. Welcome, Valiant. How are you today? Pretty good, pretty good. Well, Just... thanks for joining me in studio. And I think it's going to be a really fun exercise for people at home to learn from us. And we see all these costs on the closing statement, on mm -hmm. their monthly payments that they're making to all these management companies. State of Florida is really big, guys. And you want to find a local expert in the area that you're hunting because they're going to have all of that local knowledge for which neighborhoods to target, which to stay away from, which type of properties have higher fees, higher taxes. Absolutely, Justin. So I pretty much cover the greater Jacksonville area. The draw is the beaches everywhere, the whole strip. Ponte Vedra Beach, Jack's Beach, St. Augustine Beach, all the way down to Amelia Island and beyond. And you got Sawgrass, the TPC mm -hmm. course is right there. You know, golf is a destination, right? In Orlando, you got Reunion with tons of golf courses there. And then, like I said, the TPC course uh, is something you could go to the beach and the golf course in the same day. Golf is definitely a destination these days, particularly in that Ponte Vedra Beach area, TPC Sawgrass. Going back to that uh, person who called me from California, you could technically have a beachfront condo or or house or something near the ocean mm -hmm. and still get to disney for the day we're talking two hours maybe mm -hmm. i mean it'd be a long day right obviously if you're if your thing is disney you want to stay as close as possible and we're going to get into that a little bit later the psychology of what makes a better vacation rental property in terms of getting the most amount of income and there's some strategies we're going to share with you to get you that higher income so your investment has a higher ROI. All right, so let's get right into it. We wanna show you some real properties right now. Go into the beach first. Let's head up the coast, Daytona Beach, Ormond Beach, all the way up here to St. Augustine Beach. Some people might be like, hey, can I get a beachfront direct on the ocean for $250,000? What do you think about that? No, not, not happening. Not <laughs> all right, happening. exactly. We gotta be realistic here. Right, right. You know, that's what everybody wants. Look at some of these properties along the beach here. I mean, that one's, uh, it's only 10 million, right? Right, right, o only 10 million. Even though that's kind of what is going right now. Anywhere between the 1 millions all the way to the 10 millions, on the beach is becoming the norm. Right, because when people can work from anywhere, they say to themselves, you know, let me go rent that for a month and just get away. Right. And if it can bring them enough income that it kind of pays for itself, then why not? Exactly. Or if they want to be a snowbird where you know, they live half the year down here uh, with better weather and then they go up north when it gets a little too hot and humid, that way this can still be rented out for the rest of the year and it can pay them some rental income. I would say, especially as both, I mean, it could be used in two cases as a personal rental income or as a Airbnb, which is all the rage. Dose of reality here, uh, something a little more affordable. So within the uh, greater Jacksonville area right here, mm -hmm. uh, you have some of the beachfront. So tell me a beachfront to target right now a beachfront to target right now would just be your standard jacksonville beach jacksonville pier okay so i see one here for 4.99 let's take a look at that mm -hmm. this is kind of the first category that i want to mention especially for beachfront condos 
And we also have some condominiums in Orlando area near Disney. And one thing to take note is getting a mortgage on a property like this. If there's a, r a rental office in the condominium building where you can walk in there and rent a room for the night, that classifies that property as what's called a condo hotel, a condo hotel. And for all intents and purposes, getting a mortgage on a condo hotel is much more difficult than on an approved condominium building. And the reason is because Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, they don't allow those to be conventional bound mortgages. So your interest rate's gonna be a lot higher on a condo hotel property. So something to keep in mind. All right, so this one is listed at just under $500,000. Direct ocean front, you got the swimming pool. And keep in mind, this is gonna be right off of Third Street. So it's gonna be right, you're right on the sand. I mean, that's what I would want if right. I was going on vacation. Absolutely. And some of these are needing some updating, right? Because they're Correct. a little bit older. Correct. But that could be a, a possibility of getting some sweat equity. Because when you update it and you can charge more money per night because it looks better in the photos, then you're getting more rental income. And then long, long term, when you go to sell the property and cash out of that asset, I would think that people would want to pay more for something that's been renovated with the newest finishes. So here's where you want to be careful, though, because all fees are, cre are not created the same. Some of these properties have your standard HOA fees. Now, some of these properties also have CDD fees. If you're willing to pay CDD fees on top of HOA fees, on top of condo fees, you want to make sure you're getting something out of it. Do the Does the property have a pool? Does it have a fitness center? Does it have a doorman? You want to make sure you're getting something out of the fee that you're paying, especially if you're using it as rental income. I couldn't agree more. And with the, some of those same principles apply in the Orlando market, which we'll talk about later when we do the spreadsheet. All right, let's pick one other property just to show people maybe a little bit off the beach. Uh, what's an area you'd recommend to be just a few blocks away but still have access to nice restaurants and town stuff, but still get to the beach. Right, so this is where we, how we get into the, what we call the intercoastal area. So when I think of intercoastal, I think of maybe a bike ride away, maybe a scooter ride away, to where you're not on the beach, but you're close enough within five, 10 minutes distance. I mean, here's Amelia Island. They got that car show, luxury car show uh, every year. Correct. And here's a town home, just uh, maybe a block or two away from the beach itself, mm -hmm. closer to the town, and you're gonna have low maintenance. And this is gonna carry high HOA fee as well, being right. that it covers the roof and landscaping and everything. But you need that, because you're not gonna be doing that maintenance yourself. And of course, up and down the East Coast, you got all the way down to Cocoa, Melbourne, uh, and everything in between. Plus you got the West Coast with Clearwater, Tampa, St. Pete, Siesta Key, Longboat Key, all that stuff on that West Coast for the Gulf side. All right, so in the Orlando market to the Southwest, close to Disney, you got uh, Celebration, which is not zoned for short-term rental. So you gotta be careful about that. But over here in Kissimmee, uh, south of 192, you got a ton of different vacation home rental neighborhoods that are all zoned for Airbnb, VRBO, uh, they're on their own uh, vacation management companies, websites, doing bookings and doing the cleaning after. One of my favorites, it's not the newest, but it's got a great location. It's called Windsor Hills. And they have condominiums like these for around 250. Here's a two bedroom. And it's got an elevator to get you up to that third or fourth floor if that's the case. It's close to the pool. And these would we'll show you what this would rent out for in a second. Got your own little kitchen, you know, nicer than a hotel room, right? It wouldn't be, it would not be Orlando if it didn't have that Mickey on the wall. <laughs> yeah, you gotta, <laughs> yeah, I mean, those theme rooms are so important, right? Because when you're scrolling through photos, you want to find one that's got those theme rooms. The kids will really love mm -hmm. that. And I feel like people might book it more often if it has that. Uh, also in Windsor Hills, you've got larger properties, not just uh, condominiums and, and townhomes, but you've got single family homes. These can be four or five, eight bedrooms even. And a lot of them have their own swimming pools. This one's had a nice light renovation to it. It's got the gray theme going on. Very modern. And then there's the Star Wars theme room. Frozen, there's that swimming pool. All right, and this one's priced at $4.99, okay? And we're gonna talk about some of the fees here in a second, but just take a look at the HOA fee here. Eight twenty-two a quarter plus a second HOA because it's a guard-gated neighborhood of three eighty a quarter. Mm. 
All right, so that's going to really eat into your profits. You know, you right. start from your gross rental income, all that money coming in, being rented out maybe, what, 80% of the year. Mm -hmm. But then you got to start to figure out what's your actual take-home pay. Right. All right, and one more area that I want to show, point out real quick, a little further to the southwest into Champions Gate and the Davenport area, you have the Oasis Club by Lennar Homes. This is called Champions Gate. And what's interesting about this neighborhood in particular is there's a section that's only for uh, owner occupants or long-term rental. Okay. You know, that's something that during the pandemic, some of these short-term rental properties were getting converted into long-term renters. And it creates kind of a problem because if you think about it, if you're staying in your house and enjoying your swimming pool and your neighbor is a new neighbor every single weekend throwing parties and making tons of noise. I mean, that's not ideal, right? Right. Not at all. Not at all. So, you know, it's important to check out what does the HOA include in terms of provisions from either preventing that to make sure it stays a consistent rental for your short-term renter people, or if it is zoned for long-term only. But within the Champions Gate, you can see here's a house, eight bedrooms, big all around. You can fit, okay. you know, multiple families in this type of property and they could share and sleeps 24. It's crazy. Yeah, this would make a really good rental property. Yeah, your entire extended family can stay there. Instead of renting three or four hotel rooms, you get one of these and you get your own swimming pool. Plus you have the amazing Oasis pool right there with okay. Tiki Bar and there's games and that's kind of the premise of these uh, guard gated amenity rich neighborhoods. When you're on vacation, you're going to the parks, yes. Mm -hmm. That can get really tiring. Right. I mean, especially as a parent, you're carrying the kids around. Sometimes you want them to just chill and hang out in the resort okay. and enjoy all those amenities. Same thing for the beachfront goer, right, right? Right. Sometimes you just want to let the kids do their thing so you can actually get some relaxation there. Exactly. Let them go down to the beach, build a bunch of sandcastles. Mm -hmm. You stay up and look at the balcony, look at the water. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. and there's, there's amenities on the property. Right versus some people i think when they want to compare and contrast and find properties like this they want to actually get a beach house which maybe has no hoa so you could have higher profits the problem with that is the management of something like that you got to have somebody looking over it for damage for maintenance because we do have these things called hurricanes in florida from time to time and they're especially strong on the ocean right right and a i mean hoa is not always a bad thing hoa can actually be a good thing i mean have you ever compared a, a community that had hoa to a community that doesn't have no hoa a lot of times it'd be night and day difference uh, and, yeah and like the grass is growing about. up too high and mm -hmm. the, the house is that look like it's falling apart and you can't do anything about it right and if this is a rental income property you want to be conscious of that because you're going to be renting this thing out. And people want something of high quality when they spend money, you know, sometimes $200, $300, $400 a night to stay there. Absolutely. And, and you want to get those good reviews. Right. Because we're going to go about to go on uh, Airbnb right now and see the good reviews of uh -huh. places that rent out well, that have nice photos. And we're going to cross-reference that with the cost of owning something like this. It's all about the reviews these days. Totally. Yeah. Okay, so handy-dandy spreadsheet. Let's look at some real numbers. Okay. So on the left-hand column, we've got, I would say, the minimum point of entry. I mean, I'm not even sure we could find something directly on the beach for $250,000. What do you think? Not directly on the beach, no, but close to the beach. Like I said, in that that little intercoastal window, five, ten minutes out, absolutely. Condos, townhomes, you could definitely find something in that price range. And then I, I picked up this other range, 650, just because, I mean, if you want to have a canal in your back of your house to take a boat out, or like you said, directly on the beach, or within close to Disney, those larger uh, eight-bedroom single-family homes uh, that rent out for more money, you're, you're going to need to be up in that range. And there are huge benefits to going a little bit higher in budget price point just because you'll see from some of these gross rental income amounts, some of these houses that had the larger bedroom count uh, were getting eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 of gross rental income in 2019 pre-pandemic when Orlando had 72 million visitors, one of the most visited cities in the entire nation. And I think we're going to get back to that really soon, don't you think? Absolutely. Things are picking up. Travel is picking up yeah so i mean we're, we're everybody's right just sick of being cooped up uh, -huh. uh florida's open thank you governor <laughs> <laughs> people are just 
hunting online. I, I myself, my wife and I are looking for uh, a beach rental. Okay. Maybe on the West Coast to take the kids for a weekend. Right. So we go on Airbnb. We look for Siesta Key or St. Pete Beach or Clearwater. It's all booked. It is, absolutely, especially around this time of year. And this is going to, that pent up demand is just going to stretch into the holidays, I'm sure. I think so too. And, you know, with all the other investments, people are trying to park money in cryptocurrency and the stock market's going crazy. It is. Real estate is something that they want to diversify into. And this just has that appeal because right. you can rent it out and you can still use it for your own uses a little bit. Absolutely. All right. So back to the numbers. So if this is a, second home, right? If you don't have a ton of other investment property, you can call it a second home in Florida, as long as you're about a hundred miles away from your primary residence. And therefore you can get a better interest rate and you can put 20% down rather than 35% down for uh, an investment loan. Um, so let's say you put 20% down on either of these two scenarios and our uh, interest rate of maybe three and a quarter. I mean, rates vary, they go up and down. Mm -hmm. So the taxes in the state of Florida, you can pretty much estimate about 1.6% of the purchase price. So we're using that as a multiplier. So 4,000 a year gets paid in November or 10,000 a year for the larger property. As you can see on this property, that was the six bedroom home for 550, we have $7,600 a year in taxes, but Valiant talked about the CDD. Tell our audience what that is. Community district development fee. It can be very important, especially when you're not there to upkeep the property you just purchased for that rental income. Extremely important. You want to make sure that building does have the maintenance, especially when we're on the beach, where there is sand, where there is possible flooding. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So CDD fee, it does cover, it's not just a junk fee. It does cover some maintenance of a property All right. or uh, in a neighborhood, it covers some of the landscaping and this and that. But you also have the HOA which we'll talk about next. For condominiums, it's probably gonna be higher because you're covering the building exterior maintenance, that giant building, and insurance on the building. So when purchasing these type of properties, particularly on the water, beachfront, or even close to the beach, you wanna make sure you have boots on the ground and go take a look at these properties, reaching out to the homeowners insurance companies for you, finding out those flood insurance estimates. I mean, yeah, because we do have hurricanes, right? And um, they're a lot stronger near the ocean when they make landfall. So how does that affect uh, the rates that you're seeing from people buying these type of properties? Everything is fast now and insurance prices do go up. So you, if you can have someone there looking at the property as opposed to just videos and photos, that's always ideal. Yeah, I mean, what Valian's alluding to is something very important. You know, if, if you're buying with a loan, you're gonna have to have that insurance policy bound and you're gonna want home insurance regardless of if you're using a loan or paying with cash. And certain properties that might have some deferred maintenance, such as WDO, wood destroying organisms, wood rot, stuff like that, you're gonna to need to get that taken care of. If the roof is a lot older, that will need to be replaced because your insurance company is gonna quote you double what the normal home insurance policy would be if it needs those kind of repairs. So with the home insurance and the HOA, it's gonna vary based on neighborhood and type of property, but we're gonna go ahead and put in some generic numbers here to use. So we got home insurance policy of 1200 a year, and we got 2000 a year that may or may not be higher or lower depending on the property's features, its location, its age, all those things. HOA, we're going to go 500 a month for this $250,000 asset because it could be a condo. For the single family home, we're going to go 450 just slow, slightly lower because again, it might have amenities in the neighborhood, might be guard gated, but it might be less because it's a single family. Right. All right. And here's what it all stacks out to. So on the left hand column, if you're putting down 20%, and you have all these closing costs, you're gonna need almost $60,000 in the bank to purchase this with a loan. But after that, your monthly payment, including all those fees, is about 1,800 a month. For the larger asset, the down payment required is about almost 150,000. And your monthly is close to 4,000 a month. So those are the numbers we need to realize. And we wanna make sure that the, the monthly rental income is somewhere near this number or maybe exceeding this number. Exceeding, yeah, I would say definitely exceeding this number. I guess it all depends on how much you book it for yourself too. If you're uh, booking it for those premium weeks and months out of the year and not getting that premium rent during those times, then you probably can't expect 
you know, for it to be such a profitable asset. All right, so we got Airbnb pulled up. There's obviously a bunch of sites you can check uh, VRBO, you can check uh, different vacation homes, internal websites. Sometimes they have bookings on there that aren't on Airbnb, like Magical Vacation Homes, Villa Direct, Villa Key, Global Vacation Homes, there's a ton of them. But here we can see, we can cross-reference some of those properties we were just pulling up. Uh, and by the way, we just ch chose uh, I'm Flexible and we wanna stay for one week with two adults and two children for one week this summer. And a lot of that's booked up. So this is somewhat in the future. We're trying to see some of these theoretical dates. All right, but here in Windsor Hills, some of those condominiums we talked about, the two and the three bedrooms that are right by the swimming pool, you can see about $100 a night, maybe 110 for something like that. And the draw is the amenities in those areas. Having those, the kitchen, the multiple bedrooms, and the swimming pool, movie theater, guard gated, and within 15 minutes to the front gates of Magic Kingdom. So going back to our spreadsheet, so if you had this Disney condominium rented out 80% of the year at $100 a night, that'd be almost $30,000 of gross rental income coming in. But now the fees, you got your taxes, your HOA, your home insurance, uh, you're still paying down the mortgage. So out of that $29,000 a year in gross rental income, you're paying about 21,000 in fees and paying down the mortgage itself, which is pretty good, right? It's paying for itself, you get to use it. Mm -hmm. And in theory, you'd have maybe eight grand left over, but aha, we were forgetting something, the management. Who's managing this for you? Right. So we gotta go back, there, mm -hmm. there's actually, you know, most of these uh, vacation rental management companies that have locally, they have the cleaners, they have the handyman, everybody there locally, they're having guests check in and check out. These are things that you can't do from afar. So most of them are, are charging about a 20% off the top of the gross rental income fee. So that takes your 29,000 and drops it down to 23. Then using that calculation from before, the other fees involved with the mortgage taxes, HOA was about 21. That's leaving you $2,000 a year profit. Not exactly a huge ROI when it comes to investing sixty thousand dollars but it's long term or short term whichever route you're looking to attack it could result in the profits that you make and the thing we're, we're forgetting to mention here is it the investment is not just a monetary investment right it's something you get to actually use and if it provides the benefit to your family for one two three weeks a year uh, or multiple trips to that location, that's a cost advantage that you kind of can calculate it, right? You can put in how much would a hotel cost? How much would cooking meals since you have the kitchen, all those things and, and just having your own space. I guess my point is if, if you're doing this for just straight ROI, it's, mm -hmm. it may or may not be the best type of investment. Being that we just did the numbers, at the end of the day, the numbers are gonna have to make sense. All right, and let's take a look at the beachfront. So now we're in Jacksonville Beach. We're looking at one week two adults, two kids, to be directly on the beach with an entire condominium. You're looking at around 240 a night for this. All right, this one's an entire house for 369 a night. Right, now this is a lot more indicative of what you actually see on Jacksonville Beach. Um, 369 a night, wonderful views, can hear the waves. Now this is ideal for income property for sure. There we go. Yeah, it's a nice looking living room. Nice photos. It's got that beach cottage look to it with the wainscoting. Look at all the pictures. This doesn't have an HOA, does it? No. See, th now this is this would be something I deal with no HOA if you're looking to minimize your fees. But the maintenance. I mean, you're having to cover any type of damage from wind, flooding. I mean, we see those news reports when it's you know that hurricane hits landfall <laughs> and imagine you've got a six hundred thousand dollar asset right there i mean and that's where that flood insurance i comes mean you want to be handy. safe you want to uh -huh. evacuate all that but it's like ugh, how much money you got to spend to get that back up to right up to par or right. do an insurance claim right all right but in all seriousness is i mean at 350 a night 80 percent of the year rented out that's a big number of gross rental income mm -hmm. with less fees on a property like that right if right. it is in good condition doesn't mm -hmm. need a new roof doesn't need new acs and it's it's got bookings already and those would transfer you know that could be something where you're taking home more of that gross rental income right now even if a place like this doesn't have a traditional hoa you can always go property management if you're not going to be local if you're not going to take a couple trips just to make sure your property's you know good to go for the next renter 
this is a great way to go as far as property management. Yeah, I mean, how many people are going to actually live within close enough to their rental asset to be managing it by hand? I mean, night after night. No, right. no, it's not typical. <laughs> uh, you bring up a good point, though. I know some people that take a number of trips to the area, whether it's Orlando or other parts of Central Florida. I, I hear this sometimes. They go, you know, we've been coming here two, three times a year. Why don't we just buy something to use as kind of a snowbird place? Live six months down here, six months up north or even relocate here full time if they can work from anywhere. Folks are coming from California, Texas, making their way down to Florida. And what we're finding now is not only residential, a lot of these folks are looking for just to go come back and forth. Exactly, they're, they're looking for that full-time situation to be down here and maybe still have a rental property nearby. Mm -hmm. That way you could at least go over to it, check on it, hire local contractors and be your own GC basically to fix it up. Exactly. Because if you're spending 250000 to 500000 you want to know your money is safe. Right. All right. But to finish that calculation real quick, so if you did have a hire a management company for this type of house and you gave them 20%, you're down to eighty grand. Then mm -hmm. you got taxes for the property. Right. You got uh, home insurance would be higher because it's a single family home. You know, you're easily down into that 60 thousand a year number. Uh, but that's not bad. Not at all. Not at all. I think you get a little bit more as you go higher in on the beach, for sure. And I think the same thing goes near Disney. When you go to that 8, 10, 13 bedroom property, mm -hmm. then you're obviously renting for much higher per night. I think there's a there's a sweet spot in, in any market, which is why it's so important to get that local insight uh, from people that have done these transactions with numerous investors, vacationers, and they know the neighborhoods to target, they know the fees to look out for, so if you're looking in Jacksonville area, call this guy. Absolutely, absolutely. Valiant and Bruce Hart. And if you're looking in Orlando, you've already found the channel. Hit subscribe. Comment below if you had $500,000 to spend on a, on a vacation rental property such as this, would you choose the beach or the mouse? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of properties to choose from, but it's really about selecting the right property for you that you're going to be using, but also one that brings rental income and i think it's also important to kind of look at those areas around it that are zoned for long-term rental because you might want to compare a long-term rental investment versus a short-term or you might want to look in the residential market as for where is some growth that i might want to eventually move into this property same thing goes for the jacksonville market right right and don't let's not get locked in to the beach although that is ideal when we're talking about jacksonville Jacksonville is growing quite a bit. The downtown agricultural area, even the sports are growing right now in Jacksonville. So definitely ideal for multiple properties as opposed to just being locked into the beach, although the beach is so perfect. I love that we can go from right here in Orlando to Cocoa Beach in like 45 minutes or over to Clearwater, St. Pete in maybe like an hour and a half, depending on traffic. Right. But New Smyrna, Daytona, Ormond Beach, all the way up to Jacksonville, we got so many options. So surround it. Yeah, <laughs> surround it. Florida, it's a place to be. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you for coming in again today, Valiant, and sharing some of your knowledge. It was great to see you. And yes, sir, um, yes, sir. you had a closing today, so congrats. I did. I did. <laughs> and for those of you watching at home, if you have any questions about what you saw today in this investor video, comparing and contrasting investment properties that are short-term rental, feel free to reach out to me. My number is below or shoot me an email with your search criteria so we can get started finding you the best investment for you. As always, hit subscribe, hit like, comment below, and we're going to see you guys on the next video.